It is a sham, Rob. The whole trial is a sham. And the good thing is America understands that. And if the, the Biden administration uh, and the liberal media spent one tenth the amount of time that they do attacking President Trump, if they spent that time trying to understand uh, what the Trump supporters are feeling, what Americans are feeling, uh, the Biden administration on every front, whether it's inflation, uh, whether it's the, the, the instability around the world uh, that you just got done reporting on, I mean, they, that's the stuff they do not want us talking about. They want, they want America focused on the sham trial as opposed to focusing on the failures of the Biden administration. And we, you know, we wake up every morning and here's another, another piece of bad news on the world stage. Well, that's what we're gonna have until Joe Biden's out of office. The world was at peace when President Trump was in office. And the world is at war under Joe Biden, and it's his weakness, uh, weakness against Iran, weakness in Afghanistan, weakness against Russia, weakness against China. They're going to be attacking our infrastructure with cyber attacks happening all over. This is a giant distraction on top of being a sham, and it's, it's intentional, and it's election interference. Yeah, I, I think it's – I'm wondering just on the election interference piece, and again, that's a, that's a phrase that, that we weren't supposed to use back in 2020 on the news, but when you look at what's happening right now to Donald Trump, particularly with this criminal case in lower Manhattan, so Joe Biden is allowed to campaign uh, while Donald Trump is, is forced to sit through eight to ten hours of, of trial – at least four days a week. It's not going to happen on Wednesdays uh, due to scheduling conflicts, at least right now. How does that, let's say this trial stretches into June. Um, we're talking about almost a quarter of the time between now and Election Day that Donald Trump's going to be in that courtroom. Uh, how does that affect his ability to campaign and win in these key battleground states? Well, again, this just points to the fact what a sham it is because this these charges would never have brought, been brought against any other business person, even in the state of New York, where you, Donald Trump can't get a fair trial. I don't know if anybody can get a fair trial in New York, but they would never have been brought because this is paperwork. This is not, this, this, in any other world, this would have been a misdemeanor and would never have even ever been brought to court. If it's, and it's an alleged misdemeanor. It's not even proven that, it, that anything at all went wrong. Uh, to manufacture this thing, to turn it into 34 felony counts is all you need to know that this thing is a completely made up, uh, made up thing. And so I don't know how you can actually, you can't call this, you know, justice, you can't call it anything else other than election interference, than taking the lead candidate of one of the parties. I mean, you want to talk about something that's historic and unprecedented. It's this um, amount of of lawfare that's going on that's trying to, to harm one of the candidates in an election year. I mean, this misdemeanor, if it's, if you don't cover it, don't cover it, do whatever, but it is, it is absolutely, it was their only chance to try to get some kind of uh, blockage during the election this year, and that's why they're pursuing it. Alvin Bragg's predecessor wouldn't take this case if they think there's uh, some element in related to uh, campaign finance buried in this, in their untested legal theories, that would be the Federal Election Commission, not a county DA uh, in New York. And so the DOJ itself passed on this case. And so, I mean, this was called the zombie case for a reason, yeah. because there's nothing there there. Great point, Governor. It's also two years beyond the statute of limitations, which it's like, that's why we have the statute of limitations. It's, it's so things like this don't happen. And then, yes, to your point, it's a misdemeanor that's been bootstrapped into a, a felony here. Um, but let's play this out. Let's say Trump is, is found guilty and he's a convicted felon on Election Day. Can he weather that with voters across the country and still win? Well, I think you're seeing, you're seeing it in the polls this week, which is his numbers are up and his numbers are up in swing states. I think uh, two out of three Americans, you know, think this thing is a sham. And, and it's just, uh, you know, a message to, uh, to the Democrats and, and to the Biden campaign, which is this, this fake lawfare is not working. Yeah. Americans are hurting. They're hurting, in the, they're hurting economically under Joe Biden. They're waking up the news that, that we're heading towards World War III under Joe Biden. Their gas costs more. Their electricity costs more. Their food costs more. And, and Joe Biden's responsible for that. I mean, his policies economic policies and energy policies are what's destabilizing the world and raising prices at home. Of course, he doesn't want to talk on his track record. Of course, that's why he doesn't want to debate the president, because he's got nothing to stand on. Right. This is all, all they're generating a giant distraction, hoping that every day that goes by that people aren't paying attention to Joe Biden's policy is that they call that a win. But Americans can feel it. They feel it in their pocketbooks.